All right, what is up, Chem 110? We're gonna go ahead and do another uh, acid-base and equilibrium review. Uh, again, we do wanna give you guys all the problems that we can, just so you feel more prepared for the exam coming up. Um, I know a lot of you guys aren't looking at the video, that's okay, we don't expect you guys to be studying. Uh, but for those of you who are, um, I really hope these are helpful. Again, we're trying our best. I know it can be difficult uh, being all online, but I think this is one of the most helpful ways we can get the teaching across to you. Um, again, I chose more difficult problems just because I don't want to do the easy ones over and over. I'd rather do something that'll make you uh, kind of think about what you're doing and check your work. So let's go ahead and start. So we have a gas water shift reaction as shown below. It comes to equilibrium at 150 degrees Celsius, and I gave you the chemical equation. Um, then we're also given Kp and we're given pressures. So right away we should think, okay, I have a Kp and I have pressures. We're good to go because Kp deals with pressures. So let's write out our initial ice table. You always start by writing out the overall chemical equation. Yep, I didn't change anything. All I did was rewrite the equation. So let's fill in what we know. So we have 0.31 ATM. We have 0.31 ATM. We have 9.69 ATM. And we have 9.69 ATM. Sorry, kind of bad there. It's a 0.31. But we need to read the problem. Suppose an additional 5 ATM of carbon monoxide is injected into the equilibrium reaction mixture. So we were already at equilibrium, and now we've injected five more ATNs of CO. So we're just gonna add five here. So this becomes 5.31, right? All I did was I injected five more ATMs of the carbon monoxide once we were at equilibrium, or in this case, in our initial. Now we need to make a decision. We need to think about is the reaction going left or is it going right? And how do we do that? We look at Q or the reaction quotient. Q is equal to products over reactants, right? It's the exact same thing as K, it's just not at equilibrium. So let's fill in what we know. We have two products, 9.69 and 9.69 each. 9.69 and 9.69 divided by our reactants. We have 5.31 and 0.31. Everything in my reaction has a coefficient of one. One, 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 and one. So we're good to go, we don't have any exponents here. Run the numbers here, and Q would be equal to 57.04. So we're given Q, 57.04, and we're given K. K is 1,000. K is greater than Q. So which way is our reaction going? It's going right, because whenever you compare Q and K in this order, K on the left, Q on the right, whichever way this arrowhead points is the way your reaction is going. So in this case, the arrowhead points right, so we have to go right. Minus X, minus X, plus X, plus X. Again, we're going right, so that means if we're going to the right, these appear and these would disappear, right? Left to right, disappear, appear. So now we just add. This would be 5.31 minus x, 0.31 minus x, 9.69 plus x, and 9.69 plus x, right? All I did was I dragged down each of these uh, plus x's or minus x's. Now we can set up k. k is the exact same thing as q, right? It's just what's the difference between k and q? k is at equilibrium. So let's go ahead and set up our k equation. So K was 1.0 times 10 raised to the third. And this is equal to products over reactants. So my two products right here, 9.69 plus X, 9.69 plus X. You could also write that as 9.69 plus X squared because I mean, you're just multiplying the same thing. And then my two reactants. 5.31 minus x and 0.31 minus x. Again, there's no stoichiometry. Everything is a one, so I don't have to worry about raising to any power. Now here comes the tricky part for a lot of students. 
we're going to go ahead and I'm going to do again the math solver function. Um, so go ahead and click math. It's right below the alpha button and then scroll down to solver. I'm going to clear anything that I had originally. So this would be what? E1 is my k value, right? 1.0 times 10 to the third, or if you know it as an actual number, it's 1,000, right? So my k value always goes in this top uh, function. And then E2, or my bottom number, is the rest of this. So all of this goes in E2. Remember to put a parentheses around your numerator and denominator. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter that as I see it. So parentheses for my numerator, right? And then 9.69 plus x, 9.69 plus x. And parentheses for my numerator. Divided by, I need a starting parentheses for my denominator. That would be this one right here, the outer one. And I'm gonna enter exactly as I see it. 5.31 minus x times 0.31 minus x. Close parentheses for the denominator. Then you scroll down and make sure you don't solve it right away. I have 0.1181 and this was from the last worksheet. This is not the correct x value. So what I need to do is I need to zero this out. All I do is press zero. So now everything has been cleared out and I can go ahead and solve and I get an x value of 0 0.2902, we'll round up. X is equal to 0 0.2902. Again, if you're having trouble with the solver function, um, go ahead and try re reworking that out. Um, I know it can be tricky if you have a different calculator. I like how mine sets it up because I have top and bottom, uh, but some other calculators do not set it up that way. And I encourage you to check the recitation manual if you are struggling with that. Um, so now we have an X value of 0 0.2902. I have equilibrium pressures in terms of X, so I can just sub in X. So my partial pressure of CO at equilibrium would be 5.31 minus X, which would be 5.31 minus 0 0.2902, which would equal 5.0198. And sorry, these shouldn't be concentration brackets. These should be pressures. So this would be H2O pressure. 0 0.31 minus X. Again, my X value is just 0 0.2902. So I would do 0 0.0198. And then my pressure of CO2 would be equal to 9.69 plus X, which would be 9. 0.9802, and this is also equal to the pressure of hydrogen uh, because we know that these are the same exact value. So again, that was a more of an easier equilibrium problem compared to the last worksheet, um, but I do want to emphasize this, the K and Q comparison. Make sure that you compare K on the left, Q on the right, arrowhead points in your direction, and also using the solver function. Uh, you will have to do that on the exam. You have to do it on your homework. Um, so please get used to the solver function, or if you want to work this out by hand, that's fair too. I think it's easier to work it out with the solver function, and it saves you a ton of time. All right, let's go ahead and move on to yet another equilibrium problem. This one I feel can be a little tougher, uh, but we'll find out. So I give you a reaction, and I gave you KC. Okay, so if we have a KC value, what should we be looking for? Concentration or pressure? Concentration, right? Because underscript or subscript C would be concentration. If it was a subscript P, that would mean pressure. So in this case, we would C concentrations. Suppose a 10 liter flask contains 0.25 mole, 0.15 mole. So we're given mole values. We were given a mole value and we're given liters. Moles over liters is equal to what? Molarity, right? And molarity is units of concentrations. So why don't I find the molarity for each of these constituents? So concentration of CO2. We're given 0.25 moles and we're given a 10 liter flask, right? 0.25 divided by 10 is 2.5 molar CO2. And I'm gonna do the same thing for each of my reactants and each of my products. Concentration of H2. I'm given 0.15 moles and yet again, 10 liters, this would be 
1.5 molar. Carbon monoxide, 0.15 moles, 10 liters, 1.5 molar. Again, this is very basic Chem 110 Unit 1 math. Um, we expect you guys to know how to do this. If you're struggling, please consult uh, the previous exam or previous homework problems. Again, all I do is convert moles to molarity using my leader function. So now what do you think we're going to do next? Well, we're going to set up an ice table. So I'm going to rewrite my chemical equation. CO2 plus H2 goes to CO plus H2O. And when you're writing this, you should realize, you should think ahead. Um, what kind of stoichiometry am I going to have to be dealing with? In this case, everything is one, which makes it a lot easier. So I don't have to worry about anything being raised to a power of two or a power of three. That's just something to keep in mind when you're writing out your chemical equations. So now I have molarities. Let's fill them in. 2.5, 1.5, 1.5, and 2.5. Yet again, the K and Q comparison comes up. I don't know which way my reaction is going. These actually add up to the same. So I really can't make an educated guess. Um, again, you can't use that 50-50 shot. I mean, you can, but you're taking a high risk there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and look at Q. 1.5 times 2.5, 2.5 times 1.5. Again, Q is just products over reactants, right? I did products over reactants. Yet again, they're the same. If you have the same number over the same number, it always equals one. So now let's compare K and Q. Q is equal to one and K is 0.14. K is less than Q, so my reaction is going left. If you guess left from the start, you got lucky. Um, you should try your hand at a game of blackjack if you're that lucky. Um, but in this case, I did the math, the correct way of doing this problem. Um, and I found out that K was less than Q. Arrowhead points left, so I'm going left. So if I'm going left, does that mean that these two are being added or subtracted? They're being subtracted, right? If I'm going to the left, these are disappearing, these are appearing. So I would add these again, just like the last problem and any other equilibrium problem. And you should get equilibrium values as such. Again, all I did was I subtracted or added the X's. So now I have equilibrium concentrations in terms of X. What do I need to get now? I need to get my X value. How do I get X? I use KC. KC was 0.14. And we know KC, just like Q, just like KP, just like KA, it's products over reactants. So I have 2.5 minus X, 1.5 minus X, crooked 2.5 plus x 1.5 plus x again feel free to work these out by hand um, this one will be rather easy to work out by hand because you'd only have x and x squared um, but i'm going to go ahead and do the math solver function once again save you so much time on your exam so again e1 is always my k value 0.140 is zero. and then do not forget yet again we need those closing parentheses on the numerator and the denominator. So go ahead and enter your uh, numerator and denominator. You can follow along with me, but you can also check your work um, as I do it. So I have my parentheses opening for my numerator. Enter my values. Then I have my closing numerator parentheses divided by opening denominator parentheses 2.5 plus x, 1.5 plus x close denominator parentheses. Scroll down, make sure you zero it out, and then solve. And you should get an X value of, we'll just say 0.84 to make it easy. 0.84 was my X value. So X is equal to 0.84. I can now sub an X for each of these four. So my concentration of CO2 at equilibrium would be 2.5 plus X, which would be 3.34. Concentration of H2 would be equal to 
1.5 plus x, which would be 2.34. Concentration of CO would be equal to 1.5 minus x or 1.5 minus 0.84, and that would be 0.66. Concentration of water. 2.5 minus x, which would be 1.66. Again, I hope these are starting to click. Um, after you use so many equilibrium problems, I feel like you kind of get the strategy down. Convert everything that you need to to start with for initial, find Q, compare that to K, make a decision on which way your reaction is going, or if you're lucky and you don't know, I guess make a guess. Uh, but again, learn the difference between Q and K and how we make a reaction decision, and then solve for X. Good. All right, I want to do acids and bases just a little more. Uh, I feel like on the last worksheet, I didn't go into depth on identifying, that's the answer key, um, identifying um, which ones are the acids, which ones are the bases, and what is a conjugate. So let's go ahead and do two of them. These are kind of multiple choice style questions. Again, there's not much, there's no math, um, but I want you guys to know what the difference is between an acid and a base. So in the question, we're asked to identify the bronsted lowry acid, the base, and their conjugates. So what do I know about a bronsted lowry acid? What does it do? It donates H plus, right? So that means the base accepts the H plus. So let's look at my chemical equation. Let's just take the first one, C2H2. C2H2 goes to what in this reaction? C2H2 would go to C2H minus. So if I went from C2H2 to C2H minus, what happened? A proton left, right? We have H2 and we have H1. So if a proton was donated from here, or if a proton left from C2H2, what does that make this? The acid. So what does that make C2H minus? The conjugate base. It is not the conjugate acid. Again, we have the acid here. The acid donated the H plus to get to C2H minus. This would have to be its conjugate because the conjugate of any acid or the conjugate of any base has to have the same chemical makeup. In this case, we have C2H, we have C2H. Same chemical makeup, the conjugate of an acid is the base. So acid, conjugate, base. So if this is the acid, what does that make this? The base making this the conjugate acid. We can also check our work. NH2 minus going to NH3. H2 to H3, what happened? We gained a proton, right? We gained a proton because H2 plus one more H would be H3. Bases accept or bases gain protons. So in this case, that would make NH2 minus a base. So now go ahead and pause the video um, and do the next one by yourself. For those of you that are stuck, I'm gonna do it with you. Um, but once again, I highly encourage you to pause the video and do this on your own because you will not have me on the exam. Um, so C5H5N goes to C5H5NH+, right? Again, same chemical makeup. C5H5N can't go to Cl-, minus. That, that can't happen, it doesn't exist. C5H5N has to go to C5H5N then the H+. What happened here? We gained a proton right? We didn't have an H plus here, but now we do. So we gain that proton. What does that make this? That makes this our base, right? Bases gain the protons. So if that's our base. What is this? The conjugate of a base is a conjugate acid. HCl. From CAP 109, we should know HCl is one of our seven strong acids. So if HCl is an acid, makes Cl minus our conjugate base. We can check our work just to be sure. Pretty sure I'm not wrong. Cl minus. What happened from here to here? H plus left. So if we donate an H plus away or an H plus left, 
that makes this an acid. We would be correct in assuming HCl is our acid and Cl minus would be the conjugate base. Again, very simple, straightforward, um, but we do want you guys to know the difference between these. And do not get Bronsted-Lowry confused with Lewis, right? Bronsted-Lowry deals with protons, Lewis deals with electrons. If you're not sure between those two, I would highly recommend you look at your lecture notes on that. Uh, be able to make that distinction between what's a Lewis acid and what's a Bronsted-Lowry acid. All right, then my last question for today, um, kind of a shorter review. Uh, which of the following would be the conjugate acid in the reaction of HPO4 2 minus with water? So let's just write that out. HPO4 2 minus plus H2O. What do we think would happen? Which one of these would be an acidic character? Water usually isn't going to be an acid. More likely than not, water is not going to be an acid. So that kind of gives us the inclination to make this our acid. Let's make that assumption. Let's make this our acid and this our base. So if this is our acid, what's it going to do? It's going to donate this proton to the water. So if we lose a proton, we become PO4 3 minus. If you're unsure on that 3 minus, please watch the last video. Um, I explained in depth how it went from 2 minus to 3 minus and why that makes sense. And then if H2O gains a proton, we do we make H3O plus. So which of the following would be the conjugate acid in the reaction? If this was our acid, same chemical makeup as its conjugate, PO4, PO4. Acid, its conjugate is a base. Base, conjugate acid. This is our conjugate acid. Right, does that make, I hope that makes sense. Um, that because we had water as our base, its conjugate of a base has to be the conjugate acid. Now, this is kind of a trick question you think about two ways. Um, we're going to write this as reaction one. Again, this is kind of a two-way question. Uh, we probably wouldn't throw this to you on exam just because there are two answers here. Another option is option B. Uh, if you put that, you're not wrong. I'll explain why um, that one also works. So let's think about HPO4 2 minus again, plus H2O, right? Same reaction. In this case, we treated this as an acid. This is a weak acid, right? It is not one of our seven strong acids. You can look at the Ka and it would not be a strong acid. So if this is a weak acid, we could also think of it as a basic character. So this is our base and this is our acid. Again, highly unlikely this would happen, um, but it is valid. If H2O is our acid, what's it gonna do? It's the bronsted lowry acid, so it's gonna donate a proton, right? If it donates a proton, it becomes OH minus, right? H2O, you subtract one H, it becomes HO or OH. So if this donate a proton, where does that proton go? It goes to, it goes from the H here to the H here. So that becomes H2PO4 minus. So now what's the conjugate acid? Well, we know the base links with the conjugate acid. So that could also be a conjugate acid. Again, kind of a trick question. Um, given that this HPO4 2 minus is not a strong acid, it is valid to assume it has an acid and base character. Um, I just want you guys to think about this one mainly. Uh, that's kind of what we've been looking at in the introduction to bronson lowry acids and bases. Um, but again, this is also a valid answer. So that wraps it up. Again, rather short today. Um, but I really hope these were somewhat helpful in your review if you are reviewing over break. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Uh, via Canvas. If you have my email as well, you're more than welcome to reach out uh, to me or any of the other TAs. We are here to help you. Um, I know it can be tough to learn chem online, but I think doing these videos will really help you guys um, and have a wonderful weekend.